Hey guys, Ewan here and uh, I have a couple of interesting news for you today and this is one of them for sure. Callum Von Moger is competing again. Here, as you can see, he posted his quote-unquote transformation picture and uh, he says these pics are one week apart. Now, this doesn't have to mean anything. Uh, basically, he could have taken a shot uh, after having a huge cheat meal in the evening and you know a day of doing nothing and the other one can be uh, fasted after cardio and uh, ab workout and a pump in his chest and arms. So basically, this doesn't mean anything and he doesn't look that much different, really only more vascular, just fuller. And also, of course, lighting. Lighting can be anabolic and it makes a huge difference and the angle as well. But basically, this man, he, he's always lean. He's always shredded, basically. And I'm thinking he's always on GH. I believe he's on GH year-round. And that's why he has this th thin skin, very thin skin, very hard look. 12 months a year, really. And uh, even back then when he was injured, he still looked very lean. Is it maybe just genetic? It could be, but I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't bet on that. Never mind, guys. He is competing again. Do I need to state the obvious? Well, he injured his bicep and his leg, right leg. As you can see, his left bicep looks a little bit smaller, but it's not that bad. It's, it's fine. I'm sure he can grow it a little bit more. But his right leg looks significantly smaller. Significantly. This can be a huge problem, but since he has decided to compete, I think he can train that right leg as well now. So hopefully he will be symmetrical. This guy has so much potential. I'm sure you remember when he competed last. It was late 2018, it was November, and the goal was to win a show, to become a pro, then to win a pro show to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Callum Von Moger has the potential to do that easily. He is so genetically blessed. He does have a lot of weak points that he needs to work on, such as his back that is completely shallow, his legs should be bigger, and so on, but basically what he has is super impressive. Those arms, uh, the body fat percent that he always has, the symmetrical abs, beautiful shape overall. Not only that he's super lean and he's well shaped, but he has really good proportions. He is the new Arnold, people call him that, because he has the face like Arnold and a huge chest, huge arms. Not the same shape of biceps, for example, but big biceps. And overall, very impressive physique. Of course, for competitive bodybuilding, not that great, because he has some thicknesses. For example, he looks he, he looks like he's more genetically gifted than Chris Bumstead, for example, because he has dominant arms and dominant chest and a great V taper, wide shoulders and so on. But when you tear him apart, when you take a look at his back, at his uh, lower back especially, at his legs, at his glutes and so on, you can go on and on, uh, he has a lot of weaknesses, a lot of holes in his physique, so he wouldn't be able to win the Mr. Olympia or anything like that for sure, but still, he would be an interesting addition to the Mr. Olympia and uh, probably wouldn't crack the top 10 like this, but if he really worked on improving his body parts, especially back, especially back, I mean, everything else is pretty much fine, uh, it's just his back that really needs growing, and not just the thickness of the back, but the lats as well. You can see it from the front, you can see it from the sides, uh, his lats are really small and the thickness of his traps and everything, just from the back, it's not good, but from the front, it's amazing, it's really amazing. He easily won this show, he turned pro, I believe, here, uh, the next thing that was supposed to happen was him winning a pro show, qualifying for the Mr. Olympia, but that's when the problems started happening, um, he first had that bicep tear when he trained with Chris Bumstead, then later he completely destroyed his knee, so he was off of the probably juice and gym and everything for pretty much a year. He came back. He came back though. Right now he looks amazing and we are going to see him soon, as he announced, in 12 weeks at the Jay Cutler Desert Classic. I'm really looking forward to seeing him over there. I hope he will win. I hope he will end up at the Mr. Olympia eventually, because this guy is genetic potential all day long. It would be a waste of such genetics to not end up at the Mr. Olympia, and if he really improves his back, uh, like, a lot, he can even be a, a top three, even winning the Mr. Olympia material, but if he didn't improve his back that much over the course of who knows how many years, he's like almost 30 now, it's probably not gonna happen, let's be realistic, so I don't see that happening, but uh, even like this, maybe just a little bit improved, a little bit better conditioning, but this is fine, I mean, this is really good, he can be at the Mr. Olympia. He can win a pro show. There are many pro shows that are not that hard to win. I mean, not that hard compared to Mr. Olympia or like Arnold Classic or something like that. 
So he can be there, he can end up in the Mr. Olympia. I'm really looking forward to seeing him up there. What do you guys think? How will he do? Would he be a good pro? Do you really mind the, the lack of back thickness and, and the lat width and so on? Whatever you think about his physique, tell me down below in the comment section. Let's go with the next story. I'm a little bit late with this one and I'm sure you heard about it already, but basically Dwayne Johnson's or Rock's father died. His name was Rocky Johnson. He was 75 years old and he had an impressive physique, really impressive physique. He was also a wrestler and um, just wanted to say rest in peace, Rocky Johnson. I also noticed that The Rock didn't post anything on his social media, so I'm sure he's crumbled, but it is what it is. Rest in peace, Rocky Johnson. All right, next we have something a little bit more positive, of course, and it is uh, Patrick Moore with another photo update. And uh, this is basically a transformation. The left photo was taken 11 days from the Mr. Olympia last year, and the right one is seven weeks out of Iron Classic. So here you can see that uh, he is pretty much there with the conditioning. Of course, he is leaner on the left photo, but uh, he's not much worse on the right one. And he's actually seven weeks out. So he's trying to grow into the show and, of course, get leaner at the same time. Uh, how will that end up looking? I'm sure it's going to be super impressive. He's the dark horse. Uh, will he be able to win the show? I don't think so. I don't see that happening. But I think that show is going to be a breakthrough for him. Just like it was a breakthrough for Luke Sander, who took third. Very good third spot at the Iron Classic. I think the same thing is going to happen with Patrick Moore. Now, this is a bold statement. Uh, it's based on pretty much nothing. But I think he was overlooked at the Mr. Olympia. I think his conditioning was pretty much unparalleled. I don't think anybody was that conditioned at the Mr. Olympia. And uh, still, he didn't place that well in the 10th place. I think that that's a mistake. It shall not be repeated. And I think uh, this year at the Iron Classic, he's going to take, like, top four top five, maybe on top three. So let's see, what do you think? All right, next one is uh, just an interesting find sent to me by one of the followers. Basically, an Instagram account of Greg Kovacs. Now, of course, you know Greg Kovacs died a long time ago, but his family is running this account and they have a bunch of really rare photos. And here you can actually see how big this man was. Now, standing there, just himself, he didn't look that big, right? Because his waist was huge and he wasn't really that 3D and he didn't have that bubbly 3D look, but he was enormous. This guy was 400 pound bodybuilder. I think he was the biggest bodybuilder of all time. You thought Jay Cutler was big? Well, guess again. <laughs> Next to him, he was absolutely dwarfed. He looks like, I don't know, classic physique competitor standing next to a bodybuilder because this guy was tall and with that height, he was huge. He was thick as hell. Look at him here dwarfing uh, Jay Cutler. Of course, it's a bit of an angle as well, but this man was a beast. As I said, 400 pounds. That's 180 kilos. A bodybuilder. That's how much strongmen are heavy. This man was a bodybuilder, so imagine that. A beast, and if you want to check this Instagram account, go ahead, follow him. His family is posting uh, his photos. It's very interesting. If you're interested in these old school bodybuilders that have unfortunately passed away, you can see a bunch of very cool photos. Let's go with the next thing. All right, next one is about uh, Peter Molnar. And I'm sure if you watched Louis Marco back in the day, you remember this guy. He was a Hungarian bodybuilder with crazy genetic potential. With crazy genetic potential. He had that small, tiny neck, small joints, very 3D, bubbly type of look. Unfortunately, I don't think he competed in IBB Pro League. I think he stayed in the uh, IBB Elite Pro. But uh, apparently, even though he had an amazing potential, to become, I don't know, at least classic physique Mr. Olympia, but probably uh, an Olympian in the open, even though he was smaller, he still had that uh, impressive, super impressive shape and very complete physique. He lost all of his gains. As you can see right here, he looks super small right now. The only thing that is left of him are his biceps. And that's pretty much it. I don't know, hopefully he's just off the gear. Hopefully he's just taking some time to uh, detoxify his body, to take a rest from everything. Hopefully it's not a serious injury because look at his legs right there. Look at him. Look at his neck. Pencil neck. I mean, he always had a small neck, but right here it looks just so tiny. He lost a lot of gains. A lot of gains. Hopefully he's doing some kind of, I don't know, fruitarian diet with no steroids or anything like that. And uh, hopefully once he gets back on the juice and on meat and everything, he will regain all the size because muscle memory is an amazing thing. But as for now, he looks like somebody who basically... Uh, lifts casually, aside from that bicep. 
if you just put your finger on that bicep, you will notice that his physique is not even impressive. So, unfortunately, he did not become what we all thought he would. And this is him right now. Hopefully, he's gonna be back. And for the end of this video, we have a physique update of Ian Wallier at 295. And his off-season is officially over. This guy is a beast. He's one of the biggest guys up there. And his prep is starting. He's prepping for the Wings of Strength, I believe. And um, we're gonna see him over there competing again. Uh, hopefully, he'll qualify for the Mr. Olympia this year. I think it can happen easily. This man is an absolute beast, an absolute unit. Look at him. Just look at all that size. Now, he has a couple of really good shots, such as side chest, side tricep, and most muscular. Everything else is not up to par. If he can fix all the other poses, he can become the Mr. Olympia, but that's probably not happening. Even with all the weaknesses, he's a super impressive bodybuilder, and he deserves to be at the Mr. Olympia stage. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like it. If you want to see more, uh, subscribe, and tell me down below in the comment section whatever your thoughts are on anything from this video, really. I like the video once again, and all the best, guys. Bye-bye.